tried many times. And I've seen so many people waste enormous time and money on an effort trying to force creation into the schools. I'm telling you, you're wasting your time. It's not going to happen. And the atheists love it when a campaign gets started to say, we're going to make the schools teach creation. They love that. They just let you spend all your money and waste all your time and then defeat you in the last five seconds. They're not going to go anywhere. The teachers may discuss creation if they like in their class. They've always been allowed to do that. You might want to get a hold of the website textbookreviews.org, Mel Gabler. They've for 40 some years have been doing research on public school textbooks and what's being taught. Mel said, the courts allow states to require discussing scientific weaknesses in evolution theory, but not requiring discussing evidence for creation. You can't make the teacher talk about creation, but you can require them to talk about the weaknesses in the evolution theory. That's a start. In the landmark decision back in uh, 1963, the court held, it certainly may be said that the Bible is worthy of study for its literary and historic qualities. Nothing we have said here indicates that such study of the Bible or religion, when presented objectively as part of a secular program of education, may be affected consistently with the First Amendment. Supreme Court said, the Bible may constitutionally be used in an appropriate study of history, civilization, ethics, comparative religion, or the like. Eighth Circuit Court ruled and said, permitting public school observances which include religious elements promotes the secular cause of advancing the student's knowledge and appreciation of the role our religious heritage played in the social, cultural, and historical development of civilization. Teachers already possess the flexibility to present a variety of scientific theories about the origins of mankind and are free to teach any and all facets of this subject, 1987 Supreme Court. The court further ruled, teaching a variety of scientific theories about the origins of mankind to school children might be done with a clear secular intent of enhancing the effectiveness of science instruction. California State School Board said, discussions of any scientific fact, hypothesis, or theory related to the origins of the universe, the earth, and of life, the how, are appropriate to the science curriculum. They're telling their teachers, if you want to talk about creation, do it. Can't be more clear than that. If you want to keep up on the latest of what's happening in education, you might want to watch the video, Crisis in the Classroom, from Eagle Forum, Phyllis Schlafly's organization. Now, I would disagree with Phyllis on several philosophical things, but I think she's got a great, done a great job with this video here on what's happening. So what do people say, what about the separation of church and state? Doesn't the Constitution say that? There's no such phrase mentioned in the Constitution. That phrase is found mentioned in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Baptist Association in Danbury, Connecticut. The Constitution does not talk about separation of church and state. That's a lie. De Jefferson said, the First Amendment has erected a wall of separation between church and state. That's from his letter, not from the Constitution. By the way, this wall is a one-dimensional wall. It keeps the government from running the church, but makes sure the church Christian principles will always stay in government. Go see David Barton's excellent website, wallbuilders.com. If you want to get more on how the, all the Founding Fathers believed the church had to influence government or corrupt, government would go corrupt. Well, it's happened. What's happened over the years, several different people have taken upon themselves to survey the textbooks and see how much evolution is in this book. These guys did a survey of all the biology books used in 1991, and they found out the one used by Merrill, called Biology and Everyday Experience, only had 2.9% of the text devoted to evolution. It really wasn't talked about much. However, HBJ had 15.6%. They really crammed evolution down the throat of those kids. I've seen books today that have nearly 30%. Well, if I was on the committee to select textbooks this year, I would pick the least poisonous book I could find. And then I would write to the publishers of the other ones and say, hey folks, we did not pick your book this year because, and spell out your reasons. And then I would write to the one I did pick and say, hey fellas, we did pick your book this year because you got the least amount of evolution. However, we, need, we would like that out also. And we want to warn you, if we find another one next time that has less, we're going to buy them. You see folks, there's only one language these textbook publishers speak. The only language they speak is money. Now, if you were the CEO at HBJ, Harcourt Brace Jovanovich, and you got letters from all over the country from people saying, hey, we did not buy your book this year because guess what you're going to do next year? Only language they speak, brother. If you want to get an excellent book on some of the lies in the textbooks to see what you ought to be watching for, get this one here by... Uh, Jonathan Wells, excellent book on icons of evolution. Or you may want to get the book by the Gablers. They've spent 40 years discussing lies in the textbooks and what you can do about it. Excellent ministry in Longview, Texas. Go to uh, textbookreviews.org or to uh, 
crsc.org. They've got a newer review of the more modern textbooks. Mel wrote me a letter, said, Dr. Hovind, thank you for using our book. What are they teaching our children? You'll be interested to know that in the 39 years of work, we've never seen publishers so sensitive or schools so receptive to our textbook reviews and ranking. We're pleased to recommend Harcourt Scott Forsman Elementary Science. They are much less dogmatic on evolution than the others we reviewed. Mel says the pub publishers are scared to death of their letters of recommendation because they know there's the sales of those that aren't recommended plummet in the states. But here's what happens. They only work in Texas. Texas is one of the largest publishers of text, or largest buyers of textbooks in the nation. So the publishers will publish all these books, you know, spend billions of dollars, millions of dollars publishing these books. They try to sell them. If Texas doesn't buy them, you think they're going to burn them? No, they're going to go peddle them off in some other state that's not looking. The Gablers have a crew of folks. They'll help find, they'll help find errors in the textbooks. Like a book might say, you know, George Washington was Abraham Lincoln's vice president or something like that, you know? Dumb stuff. And they're not about to throw that book away. I mean, they spent a lot of money printing that thing. Nice, beautiful paper, you know, colored pictures. They're going to find some state that's not looking. So if you're in some state other than Texas, you better really be on the lookout. Get a hold of the Gablers and they'll tell you which ones to watch for. And they work on a donation basis and don't be a tightwad with them. Send them 50 bucks and say, here, send me your letters of recommendation. Adolf Hitler said, let me control the textbooks, I'll control the state. What's in these books anyway? And what can I do to fix this problem? Well, this chart shows how the atheists have rated the different states in America and how well they teach evolution. They think here in Florida, we're doing a lousy job of teaching evolution. Yay. They think, they, they think the folks in Minnesota, where I was yesterday morning, are doing a wonderful job teaching evolution. You ought to be ashamed of yourself in Minnesota. Get that junk out of your textbooks, okay? You can get creation materials and put them in your library. Bert Wagner, up in Ohio, uh, Iowa, knows how to cut through all the red tape and get this done. Get a hold of Bert and say, well, how do I get public school to accept creation books? One guy wrote me a letter and said, Dr. Hoven, your video series was bought for our local high school, Waverly High, in Ohio. When I went to check out video number five, I found someone had hidden the box of seminars and date debates unopened and underneath a desk by a back wall.